Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of the Shankarayas Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. And this video is for the current affairs for the date 8th of October 2024. So, before looking into the articles, uh, there is just a small announcement to be made. The pre storming UPSC prelims test series of 2025 is going to start for the batch 2nd from the 5th of October 2024. The registrations are open, so the interested aspirants can join the test series. So, now looking into the topics for discussion, this editorial article title Unpacking the centers are fed away on marital rape talks about the debate on whether marital rape should be interpreted by the judicial on the basis of dignity and equality and next article titled marina mayhem talks about the death caused during the indian air force show which was held recently in chennai marina beach due to the heat stroke and these articles are from the hindu so without any much further delay let's get into the articles discussion one by one so now moving on to the first editorial article titled unpacking the center's affidavit on marital rape this is one of the most important topic in general and let us see the context first the center's affidavit defends the marital rape exception arguing that marriage creates a reasonable expectation of sexual access and that recognizing marital rape could undermine marriage and lead to misuse however the author questions the legal merit of these claims emphasizing the judiciary's role in assessing the constitutionality of the marital rape exception before moving on to the article first let us look into a mains question critically analyze the various issues of criminalizing marital rape in india what is your view in regards of this issue? Uh, if you have seen the 2024 uh, mains paper, there has been a lot of questions which relies on our perspectives and our opinion. So, in light of that question paper, we can bring in the importance of answering such questions. So, here first we need to discuss on what is a marital rape, uh, its constitutional uh, backing and issues, recommendations or way forward to it. So, through the article, let us see the framework of this question now. What is marital rape exception? The marital rape exception is a legal provision in Indian law that exempts a husband, that is that avoids an husband from being prosecuted for raping or wife. Specifically under section 375, exception 2 of the Indian Penal Code, that is the IPC 1860, now reflected in section 23, exception 2 of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhidhi of the 2023. It states that sexual intercourse or acts by a man with his own wife, if the wife is not under 18 years of age, do not constitute as rape. This exception effectively legalizes non-consensual sex within marriage as long as the wife is above the age of 18. Now, looking into the issues with the marital rape exception, first is the violation of the right to equality that is the article 24 the marital rape exception discriminates against married women by treating them differently from unmarried women and denying them equal protection under the law this violates the constitutional right of equality ultimately marriage should not nullify a woman's right to body autonomy and dignity next is the contradiction to right to life and personal liberty which is article 21 here the marital rape exception infringes upon a woman's right to life and personal liberty which includes the right to make decisions about her body and sexual autonomy next is the social sanction of uh, non-consexual sex this provision perpetuates the archaic belief the, that is the extreme belief that marriage implies perpetual consent to sexual relations undermining the concept of consent itself Next is the lack of resources for victims. Here, women are subjected to marital rapes will have limited legal resource under the marital rape exception as it does not recognize the non-consensual sex within marriage as a criminal offense. Next is the disempowerment of women. Here, uh, this exemption reinforces the patriarchal norms that subjugate women in the marital relationships, affecting their physical, mental health and deepening the gender inequality in the society. And finally, having an international criticism. India faces criticism for this exemption as it violates the international conventions like Convention of the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women 
or the CEDAW, which India is a signatory to. Now, looking into the judicial recommendations, first is the Supreme Court observations. The Supreme Court in various cases has questioned the rationale behind this exemption and its constitutional validity under the Article uh, 14 and 21. In Independent Thought versus the Union of India case in 2017, the court read down the exception for child brides holding that marital rape of a wife aged below 18 is a rape. Next is the Law Commission of India recommendations. Here, in 2000, it recommended a review of rape laws including the marital rape exception urging reforms in line with global legal standards. Next is the Justice Verma Committee report. Here, in 2012, post the Delhi gang rape, recommended criminalizing marital rape stating that marriage should not be a defense against rape. And finally, is the National Family Health Survey. The uh, NFHS reports have consistently highlighted the prevalence of domestic and sexual violence in marriages, suggesting a need to address the marital rape legally. Now, understanding a way forward, first we need amendment of laws. The Indian Penal Code, specifically Section 375 or its counterpart in the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhiti 2023, it should be amended to remove the marital rape ex exception. Next is the introduction of consent-based laws. Law should emphasize consent in all sexual relationships regardless of marital status. This aligns with the global standards of recognizing the autonomy, dignity and agency of women. Third is the awareness and sensitization programs. The government should implement program to spread awareness on consent and gender equality within marriages aiming to reduce societal acceptance of marital rape. Next is legal support for victims. Strengthening the legal aid and protection mechanisms for women facing marital rape which includes access to immediate medical and psychological support is essential. Fifth is the judicial intervention. <clears throat> the judiciary can take a proactive role in striking down the marital rape exception as unconstitutional, ensuring that all women are equally protected under the law. Because when justice is delayed, justice is always denied. So, having a speedy judicial intervention is very important for such sensitive issues. And next is the ratification of international norms. India should fully implement international conventions like the CEDAW by removing legal provisions that discriminate against women in marriage. Now, moving on to the last editorial article titled Marina Mayhem. The article discusses the unfortunate deaths and chaos at the air show which was held in Chennai's Marina Beach on October 6th organized by the Indian Air Force as part of its 92nd anniversary. Five people have lost their lives due to what was likely because of the heat stroke, dehydration and suffocation. More than 200 people were fainted and 102 individuals were sent to hospitals for medical care. Let us see a question related to this. Discuss the environmental considerations which should be taken into account while organizing a mega event and what are the challenges in implementing effective crowd management and measures. So, in light of this question, let us see a framework for this. First is the heat stroke. Here, heat stroke is a serious and potential life-threatening condition that occurs when the body overheats and is unable to cool itself down. It is usually caused by prolonged exposure to high temperatures, especially in combination with physical activity and can occur when the body's temperature rises to 40 degree. The symptoms are high body temperature, which can be 40 degree Celsius or higher. Uh, next is having a altered mental state that is being confused or being irritated, having slurry speech or irritability, seizures and so on. Next is having a very hot and dry skin. In heat stroke caused by hot weather, skin can feel very rough. Next is having a rapid pulse and a headache. The heart might beat faster than normal and it can have a throbbing headache. The causes are nothing but again prolonged to high temperature during the heat waves then uh, very extreme physical activities in uh, hot environments, uh, dehydration which uh, impairs the body's ability to sweat and regulate the temperature and finally the lack of air circulation in any crowded or closed places. Now looking at the causes of death in overcrowded places, first is the stampedes and crowd crush. Panic in a crowd can trigger threats like fire or gunshot leading to sudden movement. 
Next is heart attack or stroke. The stress and exertion in a chaotic environment can cause heart attack strokes, especially for vulnerable individuals. Next is overcrowded conditions can worsen the heat stroke risk, especially if proper ventilation or hydration is not available. Third is the structural failures. Here collapsing of uh, the fences or stages in balconies can cause to injuries and death. Next is unsafe venue design. Here, if venues are not designed according to the large crowd, it can lead to accidents in stairways or barriers falling down and becoming blocked. Next is panic and having psychological triggers. Here, the psychological stress of feeling trapped can trigger anxiety and at the same time, it can lead to mass panic where people without a knowledge as a quick response, they can spread quickly to push or uh, fall on someone and crash inju uh, injuries. Next is security or safety failures. Here, without any inadequate crowd control, where there are poorly trained people for security and unable to manage the crowd or respond to emergencies in effective manner can cause failures. Next is to have a blocked and insufficient exist can lead to congestion. And next is a failure to communicate. That is, if there are a lot of people and if there isn't any proper communication, it can lead to confusion and they might get rumors on different issues and it can lead to emergency issues now let us see what are the measures to prevent death in a uh, overcrowded situation first is to have a limited attendance that is restricting the capacity limit next is to have a designated entrance and exit next is to know the timings properly for different crowds and next is to have a crowd barrier next is emergency services and first aid here the medical team should be present in the on-site and there need to be cooling zones where AC or fans are important and need to have hydration stations where water is being served. And next is having the environmental consideration where there is weather preparation in hot weather provide water, fans and so on and there is ventilation ultimately. And finally is to have a technological uh, integration where there are mobile alerts and live streaming for the safety of the crowd and risk assessment and emergency planning where the pre-event risk assessment is being done and emergency response teams are available and there are emergency drills happened or pilot episodes so that it can help in having a matured situation handled. Now looking at the acts for crowd management in India, there is no single overarching crowd control act very but there are various laws and guidelines addressed crowd management, public safety and prevention of accidents in mass gatherings. One is the Indian Penal Code of 1860 where it allows where it bans large gatherings if the public order is threatened and under section 188 it penalizes violations of public order next is the code of criminal procedure of 1973 here it authorizes police to disperse the unlawful assemblies and next is the magistrates can call armed forces to disperse the crowds and finally is the disaster management act of 2005 where it is used during religious or public events to prevent the crowd disasters and finally is the national disaster management authority guidelines of 2014 where these guidelines emphasis on the pre-event planning capacity limits and technological use thus as a conclusion poor planning risk assessment and implementation of robust safety measures is an important milestone uh, sorry milestone to focus on crowd safety thank you for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and to further not to miss any other contents subscribe to our channel thank you and have a great day